Hello, and thanks for joining this presentation. I'm Stephen Blair, uh, and I'm the Head of Power Systems Technologies at Synaptec in the UK. So I like to start presentations by setting out some key challenges I see, uh, which I think uh, the industry is facing uh, in deploying digital substation protection and monitoring systems. So first, uh, digital substations require uh, close coordination of, of people and uh, departments uh, which have quite different uh, and also highly specialized skills. Uh, so that could be you know protection, SCADA, networking uh, and cybersecurity. So all of these different uh, groups of people need to work together to deliver a digital substation. Uh, second, uh, utilities must manage hundreds or thousands of important substations, uh, each which will have multiple feeders uh, with primary and secondary devices to keep track of. For IC61850 process bus applications, uh, merging units, which of course are our powered devices, must be deployed close to the instrument transformers in the substation. And usually redundant communications and time synchronization uh, must be brought to these merging units. Uh, so this, this all adds a lot of complexity in the network engineering. Uh, all of these devices also require IC61850 SCL based configuration, uh, which adds time to the commissioning. Um, and at the same time, there's a desire for, for less stuff in general. Uh, so for more compact substations with, with lower carbon footprint and with easier configuration. And third here, um, Conventional SCADA systems uh, do not provide granular information about the health of assets, but the enormous amounts of data which digital substations make available needs to be better leveraged uh, to fully understand the performance of these assets uh, so that maintenance can be automated and safer. So I hope to show a route towards solving these challenges. For background, uh, Synaptic is a vendor of sensor systems and we are based in Glasgow in the UK. We've created a unique passive sensing technology which bonds CTs, VTs and other sensor types to an optical fibre. Uh, so this means that we can capture many distributed sensors with a single fibre and deliver the data to a central location uh, wherever it's needed. This is a, a very versatile system and we've worked with several grid operators uh, and, and in other industries uh, such as offshore wind to deploy this solution. So what does this solution look like? Uh, this slide shows how a single fibre can visit many assets over quite a long distance uh, and capture multiple sensor outputs. Uh, so all of the measurements are delivered to a central location, uh, which is convenient. Um, we use a unique method to passively interrogate each sensor uh, using just light. Uh, and so far, we can support many sensor types, uh, including voltage, current, strain, uh, vibration and temperature. Normally, we can deploy 50 sensors over about 100 kilometer distance per fiber. Um, we can go longer distances if, 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 and uh, ideal conditions. Uh, at each sensor location, uh, there's no need for a power supply uh, or there's no batteries to replace uh, and there's no communications equipment required uh, or any of the other infrastructure that might be needed uh, for getting information about your, your system. We can also use existing fibre if it exists uh, and without interfering with any existing data communications wavelengths on that same fibre. Uh, and if there's no fibre yet, uh, we can work with, with partners to help deploy it. So I want to uh, quickly provide an example of how this technology has been applied in, in GRID so far. Uh, and one interesting application, which I, I will focus on today, uh, is, and that we've already installed uh, a centralised protection and monitoring scheme for Statnet, which is a transmission system operator in Norway, um, to help simplify the transition to digital substations. Uh, so this is already installed in a real 300 kV substation, uh, which is just northeast of Oslo. 
This installation uh, involves six three-phase current sensors, uh, which, which are being used for bus bar protection. There are also some temperature and vibration sensors to monitor the condition of an HV transformer. Uh, those mechanical sensors are, are fed into a digital twin model. Uh, so this is quite important. Um, we're providing both electrical and mechanical monitoring of the transformer in real time. Uh, again, I'll, I'll emphasize that all of the sensors are coupled to the central IED only via a single optical fiber. Uh, and although we've mounted our optical sensors inside uh, boxes that are shown on the slide here, uh, these are not merging units and those boxes do not need any power. Uh, in fact, we eliminate the need to, to even have merging units in this solution. This slide highlights how the bus bar protection function operates. The central IED, uh, which we call the interrogator, uh, receives synchronized waveform measurements from each set of current sensors. Uh, so then it's straightforward to perform differential protection uh, on, on these waveform data streams. In this case, we're performing uh, protection on the current phasers, but we could also use, uh, use a, a sample based algorithm. Um, we can also extend this uh, to include many more feeders if required. Uh, we could do up to 16 three phase feeders per fiber. Um, and this approach also lends itself to being very fast uh, because there's, there's no communications delays and there are no processing delays inside multiple merging units. There's just one IED doing everything centrally. Um, this is especially useful when looking at performing protection over a wider area uh, rather than just inside a substation like this example. Uh, for example, for line differential teleprotection schemes, the delays involved can be non-trivial and it's often the source of headaches in implementing those schemes, uh, but this approach uh, avoids all of that. For this installation, uh, we perform the protection internally within the central IED, uh, but it's also possible to provide the sample value data to other protection IEDs, uh, so the solution is, is very flexible. Um, we would also normally connect a PTP clock source to the central IED, uh, so that all of the measurements have global time sync, um, so that's, that helps a lot with later analysis. However, there, there's an additional benefit that if the PTP clock was lost uh, for whatever reason, then we can still provide the protection service uh, seamlessly, um, but it's just using a local clock. Uh, so there's a, a, a sort of ride through capability there if the global time sync is lost. Um, it's also worth mentioning that redundancy can also be provided um, by interrogating the fiber from both ends or by having two independent fibers. So either approach would, would protect against the, the obvious issue of a sudden break in the fiber. Before deployment, uh, we did a lot of testing at the University of Strathclyde to ensure that the sensors and protection algorithm operated correctly. We used an RTDS to provide simulated waveforms, um, which were amplified and then provided to the sensor units. We also monitored the, the sample value and goose outputs. Uh, this is mainly to verify the protection trips uh, were happening correctly and to, to monitor the trip times. Here's a photo of the Dynamic Power Systems Lab at Strathclyde uh, where the testing was performed. And I've spent a lot of time working in this lab myself and it looks remarkably tidy in this photo. Uh, but here, uh, again, you can see the equipment used in the testing, including the RTDS. Uh, and the, the central interrogator IED. And so here you can see a photo of the, the joint factory acceptance test uh, with StatNet. Uh, you may recognize Ranvig Loken from StatNet in the photo. Uh, so in summary, uh, the protection tests all, all worked as expected uh, for all the internal and external fault scenarios. And uh, I would just highlight that from the testing, um, the trips are issued within one cycle, so, so it provides Subcycle protection uh, operation. And here is the final deployment in the substation in Norway. Um, here you can see on the, on the left um, is the, the passive current sensor unit being installed. 
Again, we, we mounted this uh, device inside a, a fairly large box, but that box is mostly empty. Uh, so we could optimize this to make, make its footprint even smaller. Um, we also installed two temperature measurements and one vibration se sensor uh, directly onto, onto the casing of a transformer. So this provides point measurements of temperature and vibration, uh, which, as I said earlier, are, are fed into a, a digital twin model. And here is uh, the central ID, which is uh, safely installed in the protection cabinet. So I mentioned earlier about needing to improve uh, to, to more data-driven approaches to maintenance and asset monitoring. So how can we achieve that level of intelligence that's, that's needed for those, those applications? So, so my goal um, has been to, to use the unique features of Synaptic's hardware technology and exploit it fully. Uh, so, we, so the system has the, has the ability to see far and wide, yet it doesn't compromise on measurement quality. So we can extract full data, the full sampling rate and allow it to be archived. So this allows us to offer a range of solutions in, in different timescales. So as, as we've seen, in, and it's been the main topic of this presentation, uh, some sub-cycle timescales, um, we can provide system critical protection and control, such as centralized bus bar protection I just uh, presented. Um, in more human timescales, we can provide um, uh, services such as real-time thermal rating and other related monitoring and control schemes. And importantly, um, we can offer a new dimension in asset management uh, because we can see the full waveform data of every asset. So uh, I'm going to move over to a different um, installation of Synaptics technology. And so here are some screen captures of, of our software. Uh, as you can see, this, this is an installation um, of uh, an offshore wind turbine, uh, which is just off the east coast of, of Scotland. And th this turbine is for, for testing and demonstration purposes. But it, but it is a real seven megawatt generator and it is grid connected. Um, so here we can see a, a simplified operational view of, of the key measurements for, from this, this system. Uh, in this case, it's uh, monitoring electrical current measurements and temperature measurements at cable ter terminations, um, which are particularly, particularly important to monitor over time for offshore wind applications. Uh, we also present synchrophaser information, grid frequency, and harmonic distortion values uh, through, the, through the software. We can also examine each sensor in full detail. Uh, you can see the, the real-time current waveform and the corresponding uh, harmonic spectrum appearing, all, all uh, coming through in real time. We also record all the data being generated, including all derived data, such as synchrophasers and harmonics. Um, so we, we take the snapshot every second, but we, we can do this faster if needed. Uh, we also separately archive interesting transient events where, where you need the detailed um, uh, waveform to understand the, the, the event. Here uh, on the screen, you can see several months worth of uh, wind turbine data and you can clearly visually um, observe uh, some of the obvious relationships such as wind speed and the power output of the wind turbine um, so you, you can you can look at these trends visually here but we also provide uh, an api to allow this to be done more automatically in software behind the scenes And so far, we've we've looked at you know relatively basic installations of, of Synaptics uh, hardware uh, with you know only twenty one sensors in total in in the case of the the centralized protection scheme, uh, but we can scale this up much further to observing many systems together uh, over a very wide area, each with with many sensors performing many different applications or functions. Uh, we can also provide custom visualizations for, for each application if, if required.
So at the start of this presentation, I raised three challenges that I see for, um, for implementing digital substations. I hope that I've shown that we have technologies to, to help solve these problems. So first of all, um, we make digital substation designs simpler uh, by reducing the amount of communications equipment that's required or eliminating it completely in some cases and by consolidating functions into one central IED. Uh, so this has a, adds a lot of convenience and re can really reduce the amount of engineering time required. Uh, similarly, because we provide passive sensing, um, it means we can see you know, far and wide through the whole grid, not just a single substation and at all voltage levels. Um, so this means that there are fewer physical powered IEDs to worry about and fewer devices to be configured, both, both initially when the substation is commissioned and over time as you know, things like firmware upgrades are, are required. That's just a lot easier if there are fewer devices out in the field uh, to manage. And third, uh, we make it very easy to analyze our measurements and gain actionable value because inherently all data points are automatically synchronized, um, uh, time synchronized. So each sensor is sampled at a rate of at least four gigahertz. Um, so we can see everything an asset experiences um, in both electrical and mechanical dimensions, and we get this data in real time. So in summary, um, we offer a solution that is inherently secure uh, because of the nature of the passive optical sensing. And it, is design, it has been designed to be fit and forget. So there should be very little maintenance required over time. Um, we're able to, to push data where it's needed immediately, uh, particularly with the, the, the centralized approach uh, to, to protection and control. And this data is also composed of a unique package of combined electrical and mechanical measurements. And it's also worth pointing out that this is all achieved within a, a tiny carbon footprint uh, compared to a conventional approach due to the, the passive sensing technology. So it has a low physical footprint and a low carbon footprint. So thank you very much for listening. And uh, you know, I'd be happy to chat about applications of this technology. Uh, so please get in touch. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video insightful and enjoyable. We post new Smart Grid related videos every Friday at 12 CET. So please go ahead and subscribe and let colleagues in other departments and peers in other organizations know so that they can benefit too. We welcome your feedback. So if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post them below. Thanks again and have a great day.